Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into the programmable input-output features of the RP2040. I've been pulling together a lot of PIO and DMA information, and I think I'm ready to make a stab at a very simple VGA video display. So why don't you join me as I dive headfirst into the shallow end of the VGA pool? This video goes through my trials and tribulations in trying to make a VGA video display. Spoiler alert, at the end of the video, I'll have the start of a VGA display, but it won't be fully functional. However, we'll have a much better appreciation for what goes into making one. If you want a turnkey VGA display driver for the Pico, use the Raspberry Pi Foundations driver. Please see my previous video for more information. I'll put a link in the description below. In this video, I'll be using the VGA hardware setup that I put together in Episode 6 of the PIO Chronicles. Please click on the upper right hand corner to get more information on the VGA and the Pico VGA circuitry. The heartbeats of VGA are the sync signals. There are two main signals, the vertical sync pulse and the horizontal sync pulse. The vertical sync pulse has a frequency of about 60 Hz and identifies the start of each video frame. The horizontal sync pulse has a frequency of about 31.5 kHz and identifies the start of each horizontal scan line. The pixel clock rate is about 25 MHz and is the rate that the individual color pixels are transmitted to the monitor. PIO and DMA are really the only ways to pump out this much data in such a short time. My first step is to generate the horizontal and vertical sync pulses with PIO. I'll set up one state machine for each sync pulse, starting with the horizontal one. The Pico default system clock frequency for the SDK is 125 MHz. The pixel frequency is 25 MHz, which conveniently is just 125 MHz divided by 5. Here the, is the horizontal timing for 640 by 480 VGA given in pixels. All these timings can be divided by 16, which gives us the following durations that can be easily handled by the delay function of PIO. I'll select the PIO clock rate of 125 MHz divided by 5, divided by 16, or 1.5625 MHz. Let's go through the PIO program for the horizontal line timings. I'll start the program by setting interrupt 5. This will signal the start of the front porch where no video data will be sent to the monitor. This instruction will take one PIO clock cycle. The next instruction will set the horizontal sync pin low, which indicates the start of the horizontal pulse. This instruction will take one PIO clock cycle. Next, I'll set interrupt 4 to signal the start of the horizontal sync pulse that will be used by the vertical sync PIO program. I'll add four delay cycles so that this instruction takes five PIO clock cycles. Now I'll drive the horizontal sync pin high, which is the end of the horizontal sync pulse. I'll add two additional delay cycles for a total instruction time of three PIO clock cycles. We'll clear interrupt 5, signaling the end of the back porch. I'll add 19 delay cycles so the total instruction takes 20 PIO clock cycles. Finally, I'll jump back to the beginning of the program, adding a delay of 19 cycles for a total instruction time of 20 PIO clock cycles. This gives us a regular horizontal sync pulse and indications for the beginning and end of the video horizontal blanking period. To generate the vertical sync pulse, I'll simply keep track of the horizontal pulses. Here's the vertical timing given in number of lines. Everything here happens pretty slowly, but I'll use the pixel speed of 25 megahertz for the PIO clock to keep the vertical pulses aligned to the horizontal pulses. Let's go through the second PIO program. There are four vertical durations we have to manage. The vertical front porch, where no video should be sent to the monitor, the vertical sync pulse, the vertical back porch, and the active display lines. Before the PIO program starts, 
we'll use the exec commands from the main C program to force the number of active scan lines into the X register. We'll use the set command to hardwire in the rest of the durations at appropriate times. First, I'll set the counter to 9. This will count down from 9 to 0, giving us 10 horizontal lines for the front porch. Then we'll enter a counter loop where we wait for interrupt 4 to be set, indicating a horizontal sync pulse. The interrupt will be cleared and the value of the Y register decremented and we return to the top of the delay loop. When the Y register reaches zero, we'll drive the vertical sync pin low, indicating the start of the vertical sync pulse. Then we wait for and clear interrupt four twice before we drive the vertical sync pin high again. This gives us a vertical sync pulse that is two lines long. Now we have to count 33 lines for the back porch. Unfortunately, we can only load the Y register with a maximum value of 31 using the set command. So I'll add a wait statement to count the first horizontal line before setting the Y counter to 31 to count the remaining 32 lines. I'll go through a counter loop just like before and at the end, I'll clear interrupt zero indicating the end of the back porch and the end of the vertical video blanking period. This statement moves the number of active lines that we originally forced into the X register into the Y register. In this case, it's 480. We'll then enter a counter loop just like the others and count the number of active lines before we set interrupt zero, indicating the start of the front porch and the start of the vertical video blanking period. Then the program automatically wraps to the start where we do it all again. When we configure and start the two sync PIO programs, we get the following waveforms, which are textbook. However, the tricky part is to output video. Here, everything has to happen quickly and accurately. This is the path I'm currently taking. The pixel clock frequency is 25 megahertz. That's one video word every 40 nanoseconds. Since the Pico has a default clock rate of 125 megahertz, that means that a 16-bit video data word has to be output to the VGA monitor every five clock cycles. If we run the video output state machine at full speed, we are limited to no more than five instructions in our PIO program for outputting the video data. I'll use the video output PIO state machine to throttle the flow of data from the DMA channel since DMA is capable of sending the data at 125 megahertz. Let's look at the PIO program. I'll start out by waiting for the vertical back porch to close, allowing video lines of data to be sent to the monitor. Next, I'll wait for the horizontal back porch to close, signaling when horizontal video pixels should be sent to the monitor. At this point, I do a non-blocking pull from the transmit FIFO register. I've combined both the transmit and receive FIFO registers so that I have a buffer of eight words of video data. Here, I'll copy the output shift register to the X register in order to maintain the video data in the event data isn't ready in the FIFO register when the non-blocking pull instruction is executed. Remember that a non-blocking pull with an empty FIFO is treated as a move from the X to the output shift register. Finally, I'll output the lower 16 bits of the output shift register to the video output pins, GPIO pins 0 through 15. Note that GPIO 5 is not connected to the video output and just goes along for the ride. Note that I have joined the receive FIFO to the transmit FIFO to create an eight word transmit FIFO. As a reminder, the five bits for each of the red green and blue video out channels are combined with a resistor network digital to analog converter to generate the video signal for the VGA monitor. See my previous video for more information. Now that we have the PIO programs in place to output a video signal to the monitor, we need to determine what to output. For this, I'll use direct memory access to send 640 16-bit words to the video PIO program. 
I'll use GPIO interrupts to start the DMA process and to keep track of what video line is being displayed. Let's look at the video handler and May C program for more details. In our C program, I'll start out by including all the libraries we need, including the PICO, the PIO, the interrupt request, the DMA, the P GPIO, and the bus priority. I'll also include the PIO program we just wrote. Then I'll define and initialize all the global variables. This includes defining the horizontal sync pin, the vertical sync pin, and the start of the video out pins. I also initialize the line buffer that will hold the video data for one horizontal scan line. In the main C program, I set up two GPIO pins as interrupts, the horizontal and vertical sync pins. When either of these two pins goes low, this callback routine will be called. First I check whether the horizontal sync pin triggered the interrupt. If it did, then I check to see whether we are in the active part of the screen display by checking whether the horizontal line count is greater than 45, which is the end of the vertical back porch. If we are, then I call the DMA to start transferring data from line buffer to the video state machine FIFO register. The final thing I'll do if the horizontal sync pulse caused the interrupt is to increment the horizontal line count. If the horizontal sync pin did not cause the interrupt, it must have been caused by the vertical sync pin. If that's the case, I'll set the horizontal line count to 10, which is the number of lines after the beginning of the vertical front porch until the vertical sync pulse fires. In the main C program, I'll load the three PIO programs into the PIO memory, specify the three PIO state machine clock frequencies, and then claim a state machine for each of the PIO programs. Then I'll start all three state machines running. Now I use an exec call to jam the number of active lines, which is 480, into the X register for the vertical sync PIO program. This is used to determine the proper timing for the vertical sync and has to be accomplished by using the transmit FIFO since we can only handle hard coding data inside the PIO program that is 5 bits or less. Here I identify the GPIO interrupt states, one for the horizontal sync pin where I define the callback program, and one for the vertical sync pin. Here I'll set up the DMA channel. I claim an unused channel, get the default configuration, and set the data transfer size to 16 bits. The default configuration increments the read address and does not increment the write address, which is what we want here, so I don't have to include those statements. Then I'll specify that the video PIO state machine will control the data request for the DMA channel. Next, I'll configure the DMA channel by calling the DMA channel configure statement. This assigns the write address as the transmit FIFO of the video state machine and the read address as the line buffer array. I'll write a line of pixels, in this case 640, but I won't start the DMA process yet. This will be done in the callback function. Now we have to come up with something to display. I choose to output a simple set of eight color bands, red, green, blue, black, yellow, magenta, cyan, and white. I loaded the values for those colors into an array and then fill the line buffer using a couple of for loops. I added a couple of additional test loops to clear the beginning and end of the line buffer to verify the pixel timing. Finally, I jump into a tight loop while the PIO, interrupt request, and DMA do their thing. All right, let's compile and run the program. Hmm. 
It looks close to what I was expecting, but I have a number of torn horizontal rows. It looks like a pretty consistent pattern, so I'll change the active lines to see if I can stabilize the display so we can study the tears. I changed the active lines to 487 and the pattern stopped rolling. It looks like the DMA process sometimes starts a little late, which causes the data to get to the video program a little late. You can see that the red overlaps the green, the green into the blue, and so on. I wonder if that's caused by the main C program loop interfering with the DMA process. I'll change the loop program a little to see if the pattern changes. When I replace the tight loop contents with a sleep statement, the pattern does change. Remember back to my DMA videos? Masters can address any four different downstream ports at the same time, including PWM and PIO. Well, I have a theory. I'll bet the line buffer array is located in the same bank of memory as the main C loop. If the loop is executing at the same time, that the DMA process wants to start, then the DMA process is delayed just a little, causing the tearing. There is a statement that gives the DMA bus priority over the cores. Let me add that statement into the program to change the DMA bus priority. After recompiling the program, I can see that the tearing pattern has changed, but it is still there. I think this verifies that the DMA is fighting with the core for memory resources. I believe there are workarounds to solve this issue, such as locating the line buffer array in a different bank of memory, or using a different interrupt scheme. However, I think I'm going to call it good for now. Thanks for joining me today. We made a simple VGA program for the Raspberry Pi Pico. It mostly works but there were some problems with horizontal line tearing. We were able to pull together a lot of the techniques we learned in the previous videos to get this far with the video display. I'm not sure whether I'm going to try to resolve the tearing issues since this program has met its educational goals. I have spent a fair amount of time looking into the fixes for this and I'm just not that advanced to C programmer to relocate arrays to a different memory bank. I'm not exactly sure what I'll be covering in the future. I've gotten a few suggestions from previous videos. You can help me out by letting me know what you're interested in. I should be receiving an UDU key shortly, which is a new RP2040 and ESP32 combo with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a host of sensing capabilities. That should be interesting, so stay tuned. If you like this video or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!